I guess we don't need the terminal anymore. <laughs> password, password, what? password. What's your password? I'm sure it's 1234. It's password. It doesn't have a password. It's password. I think I'm still connected to his, to, to his iPhone 3G, by the way. Okay, let's see. Uh, a thank word for New Relic. Thanks, New Relic, for sponsoring the event. Oh, by the way, this is I'm super happy about the sponsors because, to tell you the absolute truth, this wouldn't have been possible without the sponsors. Seriously, really, financially. Uh, last year, there wasn't any sponsor. Uh, but the one or two people less this year makes it that I kind of needed sponsor, and I'm glad those guys were there. Um, all right, the next one. It's going to be Rainer. Um, Rainer Brockerhoff. By the way, I always want to thank all the people who travel all around the world to come here. For one thing, John Fox, which I uh, um, uh, organized to come all the way from San Francisco. Um, so uh, the other thing is uh, Nate uh, is coming f all the way from the US. And somebody else is coming from Texas. Can that be? Or at least the invoice said Texas. It's only the company, right? You're not in Texas. Okay, that's what I thought, yeah. Um, that said, um, I, I don't know who wins the prize of being the more fast, far away. It's probably John. But uh, Rainer is coming all the way from Brazil. Um, he will explain you a little bit about his story. Um, the, the, the name is not really Brazilian. Um, he, he first uh, signed up as an attendee. And then we talk about doing a workshop. And finally, we agreed on him having um, holding a talk, so which is a nice uh, a way of uh, moving the things things around. So uh, the first time I was I uh, was looking at his Twitter account or something like that, I was it says something like 1969 Mac or something like that, which I was like, yeah, right. But he will explain you what he means. Um, he, he's back in Germany, but only for a few days, I guess. Then he's gonna head back to the better weather in Brazil. Um, and uh, he, he won for me the most excited attendee award. What does that mean? It means that I rarely had any um, attendee or, or workshop holder or speaker um, jump on iChat or messages um, that often. And we had a lot of conversation and, and awesome conversation. And, and, and I, I told him, because he was asking a few details about the conference, I told you, I'm sorry, now you are in my list, in my secret weapon list. So I'm going to have to bother you now and then with a technical question. Uh, but he, he, he was fine with that, uh, at least up until, up, at, up until now. We will see how that goes in the next uh, <laughs> months or, or years. Some of those guys here know what I'm talking about. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Please welcome our last speaker for today, Rainer Brockerhoff. Thank you very much. Okay, so where are we? Let's see. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, or maybe I should say young ladies and young whippersnappers. <laughs> I didn't really bring my cane to brandish, but I bought one of my five slide rules to, to brandish if necessary. In my opinion, since I'm a near native here, this should be called Linksbumskölle. So I'm a guy who does right now only programming for the Mac. I live in Brazil. And the joke is since 1969, and I'm going to explain you why this happens. Topics. There's the ancient, ancient part where I will touch on some part of my of, of my rather overly, overly long history, hopefully not too boring. There's, there, is, there is going to be a modern part about receipt and certificate, checking on the Mac App Store. Some parts of this may, may possibly apply to the iOS store, but I'm not really. I'm not really comfortable telling you which parts. And there are 
and there may be some secrets at, at the end. Okay. So first, I need to present you a list of strings which, which will explain what I'm going to say. When I say this is beyond the scope of this, of this talk, it will mean I don't know. If I say this is left as an exercise for the student, I didn't have the time, so you do it. If I say uh, tricky, it means it wouldn't fit on the and if it means I can't go into the details, it means ask me later because I'm on camera and I would rather not have this explained widely. Okay? Okay, so this is the so this is the history part. It's not going to be about uphill in the snow and that kind of thing, but Lots of people here told me things. My first computer was this and that. It was, an, it was a Power Mac, it was a PC, and so forth. In my case, this was my first computer. And it used, and it used punch cards, if you can believe that. <laughs> yeah, right, huge boxes of, of punch cards. And the RAM was... 4,000, 4,000 bytes, 4,000 bytes, amazing. Several years, um, six years later, graduated to this much larger, much larger mainframe. If you can believe it, this, this here on the left is the power supply, this on the right is the CPU huge machine, and it was known as, as the Mac of its day, because there was a, a design team of, I believe, five people that built it. It didn't have a, it didn't have a low, low level compiler, it just had high level, and it had 800K, which was quite better. We used to, to run, if I recall, like 500 batch jobs at the at same time, which, which was excellent at the time. So, so then, finally, the Max came, came out, and I bought one, and it was really interesting. I, I also got the original inside Mac, which was this huge loose leaf folder thing. Also in 1984, we uh, built this neat, this, this neat little 8-bit computer where I did most, most of the OS. And it had some, some interesting features like menus, movable, Windows and that kind of thing, and it worked. It was a, it was a large machine about the size of a Lisa. Okay, well, it was a good experience. Also in the next year, I was on the team that built a famous Brazilian Mac clone. I did most of the, I did most of the toolbox and the, and the uh, disk booting code, if I, if I recall correctly. Well, then, then in the uh, 1990s, I went into a, a detour. I built medical equipment, bedside monitors, and those, and those inside had a rather Mac-like architecture for some reason. And it was also developed on a Mac using ThinkC. I don't know if any of you remembers that. Yes, yes, I see the, I see the gray heads nodding on me here, <laughs> yeah. And I also built one, one, one of the very first internet, internet service providers in Brazil. Good opportunity to learn about this network we had. Modern modems, very fast modems. 
Okay, so this, bring, uh, so this uh, brings us to the Coco Day, where uh, this was my very first Coco app. I started to build it in 2001 at the Mac Hack conference. It sold for $10, and it had a nice little a nice little usage for about six years, which is a which is a which is a long time for an application. Okay, so this this is maybe widely widely known. It's it's called RB RB Split View. <laughs> Yay! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Open source and it was quite popular, and then Xcode 4 came out, and then not, not really so much, okay. So this is the current app, RB App Checker uh, Lite, and what it, what it mostly do, uh, does, it's checking, checking code signature. I'll go into that later. Well, okay, so still in the, in the part of history, this is, this is maybe the longest topic title which I ever typed into a presentation, but it's reasonably accurate. So, what didn't I do? There's a couple of, there's a couple of languages there. Another couple of languages. <laughs> there's also there's also a, there's also a garbage collection which went away before I use it. Bindings I didn't need yet and probably probably won't need. And 32 bit iOS which which is going away soon. <laughs> right. So things I've avoiding, avoided learning, but I might learn them, per, perhaps. Score, uh, score data, I have, I have never needed it. OpenCL, Open, OpenGL, which, uh, which people told me isn't, isn't really worth it. And 64-bit iOS, which I haven't started on yet and version control. <laughs> yes, version control. <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay, well, so, so this, is the, uh, this is the boring modern part. So let's, so let's go back to this, and if you squint, you may be able Able, able to, able to see there that it uh, details certificates, code signatures, hashes, blah blah blah. Why is this important? Why, why check anything? Well, people, people will copy your app, and it may work for their parents, cousins, or, and uh, developers may copy your application and base, basically pirate it and resubmit it with their certificates. There are a few known cases. How to do it? And, well, this is, uh, this is, this is, this is as yet in the wiper. The monetary losses you may in, incur for this, probably uh, about in the same order of, order of magnitude, so it's worthwhile to uh, prevent it. But Apple will lose money only in the first case, so they only teach you how to prevent the first case, which is important. So let's Let's go into the real details here, up to a point. 
first. Uh, inside, inside the contents folders, there's subfolders, files in uh, uh, the most important part is the code signature. The code sign uh, signature contains checksums, certificates, requirements. Most of these are in a special in a special section inside of the executable, and it contains checksums. For, uh, checksums for the rest of the executable. It contains checksums for that XML file there on top, and it contains a copy of the info plist at, at the time that the app was signed by, by the Mac App Store. And that XML file up there, in its turn, points at several resource files and also contains their signatures. And you've got a and you got a receipt there which also contains several types of data and the, this is all uh, well and and as well hidden fields which seem to be the Apple uh, ID of the guy who bought it. And all of this is in that PKCS7 container, which is beyond the scope of this talk. So in the beginning, some application just uh, tested if a receipt was, was uh, present and, and, and if it wasn't, they did this exit and and that was it. This is very easily pirated. You just have to put in a fake receipt or, or another in its place, and it ran. I think the first version of angry, 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 angry something, angry birds did that. I think angry birds did it. So, Apple now tells you to to do checking there on this on this thing. So you so you need to so you need to check the bundle ID, the version, and and the uh, hash of that computer, and if it's the case in app purchases, and this will prevent the first case, copying between users. So, checking the receipt. Tricky. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of code. There's an, there's an Apple doc which uh, tells, you, uh, tells you, but doesn't give you, uh, it doesn't give you a full code listing. And I, and I can't do it right now. But you need to remember, always, uh, always uh, check literals and info P list for all of these receipt data. And you need to be especially careful for the certificates. You have to validate the signature of the receipt itself, and you need to check if it's the Apple, Apple root certificate and if it's and if it's in your keychain. And this also, this also helps avoid you, uh, avoids people uh, generating their, their own receipts. Now, more tricky code. <laughs> but you, uh, you basically need to call sec code copy copy self, which will give you a code reference, which, which uh, you, will, you will pass the, to the other APIs, check if the code is valid as running, then you, and, and then you can get a dictionary with, with the code signing. 
in information. Important, yeah, it's a lot of information. There are uh, dozens of keys in there, but the important keys are the bundle ID, obviously. There's a, uh, there's a, uh, uh, there's a flag word which should have this bit turned on. This bit basically tells you if there's some other process modifying your code at this time. There's, there's a copy of the info P list and, and there's a certificate chain which was, which was explained in the previous, previous, in the previous talk here. And there are the explicit or designated requirements for that code signature. So basically, you just, you just, you just uh, need to get all of those, check them with hard-coded values, compare parts of the info P list if you got, if you got special values in there, and same thing. You need to look at the, at the cer certificate if it's if it's a developer ID app, you have your, your, your own certificate. If, if it's a Mac App Store, you've got a, a normal Mac App Store certificate. Well, the question now is how to, how to see if uh, someone else copied your application, re-signed it, and put it back into the store. For this, you need to get the requirements and, and check them for your uh, team ID. So, and this will prevent hijacking of your application. Well, at this point, we need to go into code obfuscation. It's a bad thing to do, but you need to do it. Why? 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 Why waste time doing, doing these things when people just can go in, trace, patch your binary? Well, thing is, any, anything you will do will, will uh, cut down on the size of, of people able to follow you. So it's not really solvable, but you can do a part. So 50%, 80% means you, you cut a chain, uh, you cut a chance of someone doing it quite a lot. So, and once you did it, you can use this again and again and again, just just by changing things around. And the big tool there is debugging aids. The problem is both sides can use them. But you, you can really make it difficult, and I can't talk about it again, but you need to use only C functions, don't use methods, they are very easy to analyze, you need, to, you need to use scrambled C strings, and you need to abandon all practices you have learned. You need to use globals, you need to do index jumps, you need to do computed. <laughs> you need to use function pointers and switch them around. It's a mess, but but it will be a mess for the guy hacking your code. So, you, right? Uh, things out of order, different places, defeat the optimizer, it's fun, <laughs> right? And, and of course, all of this is to, is to try to prevent binary patching. So, for, uh, for instance, MA Future, this is by Mike Ash, who is quite 
well known, and it lets you do parts in blocks, in parallels, because there are many things you can do in uh, parallel, like get, get, uh, getting the receipt file, parsing the receipt file, then getting the, getting the, get, uh, getting the certificates. I've got one implementation of this which which can do up to six or seven uh, parts in parallel and pass data uh, back and forth. It's, it's extremely hard to debug, but once it works, it works. Don't use the systems library for uh, cryptography. Why? Apple tells you to uh, do so because the, uh, uh, because the system library is, is extremely easy to intercept. And it's more difficult with a, with a static library. Make exit and terminate harder to patch out. You can do it later. So the guy will have to patch things and then see if a minute later the app terminates, oops, it wasn't that. Uh, so he has to go back, he, uh, he, loses, he loses time etc etc and anything you do should never be visible don't do any checking with the with the ui visible checking is fast it takes in my applications around 100 milliseconds which is quite good uh, look at look at security uh, transforms which uh, People, people uh, tell me they could do many of those parallel and depends, uh, dependency things, but I don't really, I don't really know about them yet. And and, it's, and it was at least, at least in my case, I learned a lot about security, about certificate, about uh, cryptography, and can't. Uh, can't uh, repeat this enough. Learn all debugging tools and try to break them. <laughs> Secrets part, or rather advice. The big thing about programming, uh, there, are, there are parts of it which are too easy. So you get, uh, you get this nice diagram here. Right, I don't know if this looks if this looks familiar to you guys, but uh, the most important part about this dragon, did you see the magic part over there? There is no magic. It's ones and zero all the way down, uh, and then the turtles begin. <laughs> right, and it's hard. You got maybe eighteen orders of magnitude to think in and keep in mind. And layers and layers and levels to keep all of this in mind is terrible. But you need to have an idea of, of those levels. Otherwise, it's magic. If you don't know what's, how it works, it's magic and it can go and bite you. Learn the levels train it, but check. Why does it, does it do that? How does it do that? And again, learn to debug. It's basic. OK. <laughs> so uh, final words. F uh, flexible, but not too, too flexible also. No COBOL, no C++, etc. <laughs> if avoidable. Practical, but no magic. That's the final word. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, we actually have time for one question, but keep your one questions question. for, for Eric, because I'm sure you guys had one. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, John? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not used of John being so non-remarkable or whatever. Usually he jumps all around, so we see him. 
Who had, who had, Hi, the, John. Who had the very first Mac in Brazil if you had the second one? And did you, steal, did you steal the first, the one who had the first person no, and that's how you got the second uh, one? Uh, no, no, it was a guy called Fritz Dore and, I, and we have, we, we never, we never met, but I, uh, but I did talk to him uh, a couple of times. Did Apple get upset at the this the the Mac clone? I mean, I, I guess that's kind of an obvious question. How did you avoid ending up in Guantanamo with, uh, Bay? With you mean uh, you mean you mean upset with the Mac clone thing? Yeah. That's a very long. Uh, that's a very long. Uh, that's a very very. Com complex story, and I I plan to publish a book about it when the uh, principals have died, or the anyway. I anyway, ask me later. Ask me later. <laughs> Let's give Rainer another round of applause, and uh, we'll you. take. We'll take a break for like 25 minutes and then uh, we'll be back here with the panel. So there is still plenty of cake. Please eat that old cake. Otherwise, I'll have to bring it home for my kids. I do not understand this argument. It makes no fucking sense to me. Shut up. Okay. okay. <laughs> look, look, listen, seriously. Fuck ones and zeros. Utter bullshit. Fuck ones and zeros. Utter bullshit. Okay. <laughs> look, look, okay. <laughs> look. Look, I do not under I do not under I do I do I do understand this argument. Understand this argument. Understand this utter bullshit. It makes no fucking sense to me. It makes no fucking ones and zeros. Ones and zeros. Ones and zeros. Ones and zeros. Ones and zeros.